Hey there, CJ Maurer with The Gist, and today we're gonna to be talking about deal pipeline configuration. I am willing to believe that you and your organization are not getting as much value out of your deal pipeline, so right now, I'm gonna show you exactly how to turn your deal pipeline to an instrument for growth in HubSpot. Let's dive in. So what do you see here? You see what looks like a pretty normal functioning deal pipeline. Right? You see stages, you see a little deal tags here that could be used in a variety of ways. You move a deal from one stage to another, you have required properties in order to advance the deal, that's great. What you're not really seeing is all the work that went on behind the scenes to make this a fully functional and optimized deal pipeline. Now you might ask, CJ, what does it mean for a deal pipeline to be optimized? Well, most companies, the way they use their deal pipeline is kind of like project management for sales. Well, we need to be able to track all of our sales opportunities, so let's put it in a pipeline, let's break it out by stages. So that way managers can hold reps accountable if they're not creating enough deals or their deals aren't progressing enough. And then typically you also use it for revenue forecasts to get a sense of what might be coming in. And that's good, but that is garden variety sales management within your CRM. Your deal pipeline can and should be so, so much more. Your deal pipeline should be the source of really, really valuable reports to understand where you're succeeding, where you're falling short, and where your growth is coming from. It should also eliminate manual tasks and create more operational efficiencies and alignment across teams. And it should serve as the foundation to be able to conduct much, much more effective lead, prospect, and even customer nurturing. So I'm gonna show you what that means. Before we even start building things in HubSpot, that's where a lot of people go wrong. If I'm going to build a building, I am not just going to start building it. There's a reason why blueprints exist. And we think that you should have a deal planning blueprint. So we created one. And by the way, if you would like access to this deal planning workbook slash blueprint, click the link in the description of this video and we will provide you one. Let me talk about what it looks like first though. First, we have an example and then we actually have a blank version. So what this workbook does, and by the way, if you click on any of these links, it will open up videos that explain why we do things the way we do them and how to actually use this workbook. What the workbook is designed to do is prompt you to make the necessary decisions in order to have a really effective deal pipeline. So obviously first you wanna start with your stages. What are the major milestones of our sales process and what do we want to call them? All the way down to tense, by the way, um, I'm talking about verb tense, not like tense as in you're anxious. More often than not, you wanna have consistency across the tense, the verb tenses in the pipeline. Uh, it should, every stage should either mark the beginning of a process or the completion of a process. There's less confusion about where to put a deal in what stage. So here I have this new prospect, it's qualified. Fit assessment complete, proposal sent, verbal commitment, signed agreement. This is marking the completion of certain stages. Then what you also wanna do is put your forecast probabilities. This allows you to have accurate weighted forecasts. And while you're at it, create internal definitions of what it means for a deal to be in this stage. That is really, really good when you're rolling this out for your team and training everybody. Next, you wanna start brainstorming what fields, custom deal properties, are worth collecting in the sales process. There are some basic ones like owner, deal type, how do you define that, right? In this case, we use new business, current client upsell or current client renewal and source of business. These are very, very specific garden variety custom deal pipelines. But depending on your business, you probably want to capture more. So first stop and think when you wanna figure out what custom deal properties you want, first think this, what information do we need to figure out who to assign the lead to? Do you do it by size or industry or, or territory? So think about that. If so, you're gonna to want to find a way to capture that on the deal. Also, what information do we need to figure out what solutions to propose and recommend? Is it based on interest? Is it based on other qualifying factors? These are things that you're likely asking in exploratory calls and scoping calls or things that you're going over in software demos already. Your sales team is already conditioned to ask them and write them down somewhere. They might as well put it in the CRM. But anyways, go through this exercise and figure out, like for us, 
uh, we always want to know what CRM they're using. We also want to know what pain points they're interested in and a bunch of other things. Down the road, you also want to think about what information do we need when somebody says yes, information that we want to pass along to whoever is going to be working with this client from an onboarding perspective or a customer success perspective. But we'll get into that in a second. And then what you want to do is actually lay this out. Like we have this pipeline mapper where whatever you put in up here for your deal pipeline stage will automatically come down here. And it's a really good way to visualize first and foremost, what fields are going to be required in order to move a deal into a new stage. So what this map is suggesting is that you cannot move a deal into fit assessment complete until you enter an industry, client company name, current CRM and pain points. And what it's designed to do is show you that once you get to signed agreement, here is the aggregate of properties that you know will have had to have been captured, assuming you structure your deal pipeline this way. So this is a really, really good tool. What you can also do is plan your automations. And we've broken them out into four categories, escalations, internal notifications, property updates, and essentially other, right? So escalations. Under which circumstances do I want to escalate, remind uh, sales reps to pay attention to this deal? If it sits in this stage for too long, uh, do we want to remind our reps to either update the deal or move it to close loss? Or is it when it sits in this stage and there's been no contact? And there may be even some instances where instead of escalating, you just wanna move it for them. A common example would be if, if a deal has been in a proposal stage for let's say 90 days and you've already sent three or four reminders to the, to the client to update the deal or reach out to the prospect and the prospect has not returned any communication, you may be a sales leader that says, I don't wanna clog up our deal with fairy tale dreams of deals that are never gonna close, so I'm just gonna move this to close lost so we can build workflows that do that. So this is a really good way to help you plan out how you want your deal pipeline to function. And what you can also do is just brainstorm general automations that are not specific to a deal stage, such as if there is a contact, a prospect, associate with a deal in any open stage and they visit the website, I just wanna send a little alert to the sales owner so that they're aware that, hey, your prospect was visiting our website. Little things like that. So first and foremost, map what you're gonna build before you build it, and then you start building it. So I'm gonna go through some of the really, really high points. Obviously, a deal begins with how you create it. Uh, so the first thing that you wanna do is figure out how deals are created. And the two most common ways are number one, automatically, through a workflow, usually triggered by a form submission or a conversion through your website. And then the second one is manually. First and foremost, if you have forms on your website that are bottom funnel, like request pricing, talk to sales, schedule a demo, you know you're gonna create deals and assign those from those form submissions. So what you first must do is make sure that those forms are collecting all of the information that you would need to determine, one, qualify the lead, and then determine who it goes to. Configure your forms to do just that, right? Make sure that they have any of the qualifying fields, whether it be location or size or interest level or, or other demographics you use to qualify. Then what you do is you move it into a workflow, right? Now, first and foremost, in that workflow, you're gonna wanna set them as a marketing contact uh, because you're going to want to automate emails to them. You may also have certain logic, like for example, for us, we branch to first check to see if it's an existing client, right? We, we handle it differently if it's a new lead versus an existing client. So if it's a new lead, then we wanna set the life cycle stage to qualified prospect. You wanna see we're creating a deal and then we're sending an internal notification. And then what we're also doing, depending on what product they inquired about, we're sending them a custom email. So let's say they're interested in HubSpot. You'll see this, this email right here that recommends, or sorry, that references HubSpot implementation. And it's an automated way to say, thank you for inquiring, I've heard you. You can book a time right here, otherwise I'll be in touch in a day or two, right? So speed to lead, respond, reduce friction. All I did was inquire and all of a sudden they're like, cool, the next step is to schedule an exploratory call. I can do that right now. So that's automation. 
Now, obviously your sales reps are gonna do their own prospecting and create deals manually, so you're gonna to wanna to customize the create deal form. So you wanna make sure that no deals can be created unless the minimum standard of properties are provided. So again, go back to your planner and say, what is the bare minimum? Well, they can't create a deal unless they put in the owner, the deal type, and the source. Nobody should not know any of that information when creating a deal. You should always know who's the owner, is it a new client or is it an upsell? And where did this come from? Bare minimum. Some companies, maybe you would expect to know more by the time a deal is created. But now what you've done is you've ensured that there's no way a deal can be created without having the minimum viable amount of information. And then from there, it's about configuring your pipeline, right? So when you go into objects uh, in settings and objects in deals, you create a pipeline or go to your pipeline and then you go in and you build in your conditional stage properties. So what I'm showing right now, let's say proposal sent, here's information that I need to get. What are the client's growth objectives? What engagement type is this? What are the target engagements that we've proposed? Client name, because we use this as a personalization token for quotes and other things, uh, and the amount on the proposal. Fortunately, we have workflows that automatically populate this, pull this from the company, pull this from the quote, and populate these, so we rarely, if ever, have to put those in. But do that for all of your different stages. Now, what you also may want to do is add further conditional fields. So I'll give you an example. When we go to a verbal agreement, we have a property called final engagements. Now this is where you can use your deal pipeline, not just for traditional sales stuff, but to assist with the transition from sales to onboarding implementation or customer service, whatever, right? So I built conditional properties. I'm gonna show you over here. In your property section, just go to conditional logic and you, that's where you create it. What I've done is said, if final engagement is HubSpot implementation, then it's going to trigger a lot of those conditional fields, and I'll show you. Right here, you can see if final engagements is HubSpot implementation, we wanna know a lot of things. The subscription start date, what type of implementation are we doing? What are their current subscri subscriptions? What hubs are we targeting? What's the goal project completion date, the link to quote, the number of payments. So all of these all of this data is really relevant. Some of it's gonna to go to the account manager who needs to get ready to kick off this project. Some of it goes to our admin who needs to configure billing. All the sales rep needs to do is move the deal and fill out the required properties. And then we use workflows on the back end to you know, create tickets, sync things over to our project management software, send notifications and get the process moving, which is why it's very wise to then build out your workflows. As you can see, we have a lot of workflows like archiving spam deals, applying naming conventions on deals, and a lot of other things that I don't have time to show you, but the point is a deal pipeline can and should be a true instrument for growth. It should be able to tell you by the way you've configured it, where your growth is coming from, where you're having success. What is your close one ratio on this type of deal versus this type of deal? How can that inform how we target prospects in the future? It can automatically take data captured in the sales process and push them over to master company records or contact records and assist with the, the transition from sales to onboarding and customer service and not even to get in all of the reporting that you can do. That'll be a video for another day. So listen, uh, I'm really, really passionate about this. I really, really want you to leverage your deal pipeline as a true instrument for growth. And I invite you to use our deal pipeline planning workbook to help you do that. Once again, click the link in the description of this video and it'll take you to a landing page where you can fill out a quick form and access it and start using it. Why are you filling out the form? Because once a month, I'm gonna send you an email with all of our best HubSpot videos and content. I hope that's okay. Anyways, thanks so much for sticking around. I am CJ, the founder of The Gist, certified HubSpot solutions partner based in Buffalo, New York. We absolutely love making these videos for you. If you have any suggestions, get in touch with us, request new tutorials. We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.